Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on shared parental leave and pay. My name's Duncan, I'm your host and presenter and uh, we are joined by my colleague Calvin who is standing by ready to answer any of your questions. So let's take a look at what we're going to cover in the webinar. So we're going to begin with an introduction to some of the legislation around shared parental leave and pay and the process that an employee would follow to apply for this. Uh, we're then going to go into some demos. So I'm going to show you how to set this up in Sage 50 Cloud Payroll and how to process the shared parental pay, adjusting any other payments that you might be making. And uh, we're going to finish the demo with a little bit on reclaiming shared parental pay, which uh, works in exactly the same way as reclaiming maternity, paternity or adoption. And then we'll run through some further support and uh, give you a chance to submit any of your final questions um, before we close down. So onto the introduction and uh, we'll start by explaining what shared parental leave and pay actually is. So SPL or shared parental leave is an entitlement of up to 50 weeks that can be taken um, when a, a mother or an adopter decides to end their maternity or adoption leave early and therefore have a remaining entitlement to share with their partner. So SPL is the leave element. Um, SHPP is statutory shared parental pay. So this is what we're gonna focus on in the webinar because this is what you'd process through your payroll. Uh, that's an entitlement of up to 37 weeks of paid leave that can be shared with either the, with the partner or the, the, the mother or main adopter. So this is a more flexible scheme that actually replaced the additional statutory paternity pay that was available uh, up until April 2015. And um, there's some good information available on how this works in the employer's guide from HMRC. And you can follow the link on screen if you wanted to read up more on that. So let's take a look at the eligibility for the, the paid element, the shared parental pay. So your employees can get SHPP if one of the following applies. So if they're eligible for statutory maternity or adoption pay, it means they would also be eligible to take up um, shared parental pay if they decide to end that early. Um, or if it's a partner that's eligible for statutory paternity pay and their partner, i.e. the mother or adopter, is eligible for SMP maternity allowance or SAP, um, they would also meet the requirements to get shared parental pay. So if you qualify for the original statutory payment, you would also qualify for the shared pay. Now, as a statutory parental payment, it's paid at a, a fixed rate of £156.66 per week or 90% of average weekly earnings, whichever is lower. So the average will be taken um, in the eight week period up to the qualifying week. So the same average that would be used for maternity uh, pay or, or checking the qualifying conditions for paternity pay. And um, as I say, it's 15666 or 90% or of the average, whichever is lower. So it's the same as the standard rate of the other statutory payments. So how do your employees get shared parental pay? Well, the process works by the mother or adopter um, notifying you that they are ending their SMP or SAP and they're either returning to work where the partner will perhaps take over and take the shared leave um, or they've given you binding notice of the date that they will end their maternity or adoption. And then from that point, um, they can start to use shared parental leave and shared parental pay for the remaining entitlement, but they will need to give you at least eight weeks written notice of their entitlement and uh, when they intend to take it. So it is down to the parents to work out how they want to share that remaining leave and pay. And they would fill in some forms and they would give them to their respective employers um, to give notice and uh, to, to apply for this. So I've put a link to the form on the handout that takes you to the ACAS website. So it looks something like this. There's slightly different forms. So one for after maternity leave. Um, there's some forms for after adopting a child and a slightly different form for um, surrogacy arrangements. 
and then also template letters they can use to sort of book the, the, the dates of their leave. So I wanted to give you a quick look at one of these forms. So I've downloaded and I've filled in um, a shared parental leave form for after maternity leave. So you get them as Word documents and on the first page it tells you which of the four forms need to be completed. So one of the examples I'm going to show you in the demo is that the partner will be taking the shared parental leave and the mother will be returning to work. So it tells us here that forms one, three and four would be needed to filled in in this scenario. So form one is filled in and given to the mother's employer. So it just confirms details of when they took the maternity leave and when they're gonna end it, how many weeks were taken at that point. So we, we've got an example here where the mother has taken 33 weeks of her maternity leave and SMP. Uh, form two isn't required in this example because the birth parent or mother is not intending to take SPL. Uh, form three is just confirmation that the mother is not taking the shared parental leave. So they hand that into their employer and it's form four that would go to the partner's employer, which provides details of how much of the leave was remaining. So six weeks in this example, uh, or 19 weeks of leave, six weeks of paid leave and uh, how many weeks they intend to take. So they'll give you the dates. It can be in blocks of leave, which I'll expand on in a moment. Uh, and then they would sign these declarations and hand in the relevant forms. So the process is slightly more complex than it would be for maternity or paternity. But um, the ACAS website is a good resource perhaps to share with any employees who are interested. So I touched upon blocks of leave just now. So when can an employee take their shared parental leave and where applicable receive shared parental pay? Um, well, they can take up to three separate blocks of leave under the legislation. So they don't have to take it as a continuous block as they would do for SMP or SAP. Uh, the leave can be taken at different times or at the same time as the other parent. So it's down to them to decide when they're gonna take the leave and they can both be off at the same time but obviously there's only the number of weeks left that they can share between them. And I've got a few examples just to try and illustrate this. So um, on the current slide, you'll see this represents um, a mother or a doctor taking their full 39 weeks of uh, maternity or adoption pay uh, with the partner taking two weeks of paternity pay after the baby was born. Uh, but if they decide they want to use shared parental leave and pay, um, the maternity pay would be cut short. So in the example we just looked at, 33 weeks of SMP were taken, and that makes the remaining six weeks available to be shared. So that might just go straight to the partner, um, which is how it would have worked when it was additional statutory paternity pay. But then other possibilities is they might want to take some shared parental leave and shared parental pay at the same time. So in this example, I've cut the SMP short. They're then going to be off together for a period of time with the partner staying off a little bit longer to use up the remainder of that entitlement. Or they could split it into blocks of leave. And you can have gaps in between these blocks as long as the shared parental leave and pay uh, all occurs within the first year of the baby's life. So in the case of, of um, maternity, uh, you get up to the child's first birthday to use the shared entitlement. So just some examples of, of how, it, how it could be taken, um, but we're now going to dive into some demos. So I'm going to show you how to put this into practice, how to set it up in Sage 50 payroll. So um, let's just jump into the program. Um, I'm running a monthly payroll in this example. And the first lot of shared parental pay that I'm going to set up will be for a partner. So the um, baby's mother doesn't work for us, um, but she's decided to end her maternity leave six weeks early, um, leaving six weeks to be shared. And the partner in this instance is going to take all of those six weeks as shared parental pay. So first of all, we'll need to open up the employee record. 
So it's employee two in this first example. Uh, you would go to the absence tab and you'll need to find the original statutory payment that was paid. So in this case, the employee uh, qualified for paternity pay, actually took two weeks, as you'll see around Christmas time when the baby was born. And because they qualified for SPP, it means that they'll also meet the qualifying conditions for the shared parental pay. So you'll need to enter some details by clicking on shared parental pay here on the right hand side. Uh, you tick the box to say you've received the forms, the declaration. Uh, on that form, it would confirm the number of weeks available to share and the number of weeks that this employee intends to take. So in this example, six weeks available and this employee, the partner, will be taking them all. Uh, the weeks recorded, you don't need to fill in because you'll be recording this on the absence diary, but we will come back to this screen to check that it all ties up with what was being taken. And then you would record the partner details. So just popping those in here, as well as the NI number, if that was on the form as well. So once you've entered this information, you'd click OK, and you would save the record. And then it's just a case of recording the dates uh, that the employee will be taking that leave. So this is similar to when you record sickness for statutory sick pay, you could use diary entry, or you can click and drag a selection of dates on the diary. So I'm gonna go into diary entry and for shared parental, just need to switch the absence type to other and choose the shared parental option towards the bottom and then you enter the the dates of the leave so i'm going to record the full six week block um, which is going to start on the 25th of july and that's going to run all the way up to the 4th of september uh, we can put a comment in if we want to for our own records and if I click OK, you can see that has recorded the absence. And very much like sickness, uh, the absence entries are in lowercase um, whilst they remain current. And as soon as they turn historical, once you've completed payroll for that period, uh, you will see that these diary entries turn into capital letters. So that's everything set up for this first employee. And uh, I just want to show you how you would set it up if the mother or main adopter is taking some shared parental leave and pay. A uh, similar process. So let's pick out um, our other employee, employee four. So with this one, um, they've planned that they're going to end the SMP after six weeks. So basically, once she's had the higher rate entitlement, uh, she's then going to share the remaining 33 weeks with her partner. And they've decided that she will be taking 13 weeks and the partner will be taking the rest, the 20 weeks. So let's go into the record. And as we did before, to the absence tab and find the original statutory payment. So it was SMP in this case. So um, a few bits of detail we need to fill in here. So if you haven't already done so, you need to confirm the born on date for the child. And that will determine the, the one year um, that shared parental pay can be taken within. So one year from the birth date. So let's just pop in for the 17th of June. And also uh, the date that they have ended their SMP. So it goes in the return to work section, uh, but in reality, this employee won't be returning. They'll be going straight on to their shared parental pay. So return to work in this example, we're going to put the 4th of July. Now, once we've entered that information, you'll see it started to build up here. Actually, if I just flick between a couple of tabs so we can see everything on this screen, you'll see the shared parental pay section appears. Once you've filled in these two dates, uh, it confirms that there are 33 weeks remaining of paid leave. Uh, that's the amount for that 33 weeks and we can click on shared parental pay to enter the details uh, just like we did for the other employee. So I'm just going to tick the box declaration received. It already knows that there are 33 weeks available to take. Um, this employee 
it's going to be taking 13. And the partner of this employee doesn't work for us. So they'll take their forms to their employer. Uh, they'll be taking the other 20. Put the partner details in. And then click OK to save that. And then just like we did before, it's a case of recording the dates that are being taken. So um, conveniently, they've done this as a just one single block. So we're going to record that now. I'll just show you the other way of doing it. So you can click and drag a selection of dates. So in my case, from Monday the 4th of July to Sunday the 2nd of October. That's the 13 weeks they're taking. If I right click that selection, go to absence, into shared parental and click full day. You can see that is now recorded on the absence diary. And if I go back into the shared parental pay section, we can see that we have indeed recorded 13 weeks. So that is everything set up. Um, we'll give you a quick recap of that process and then we'll take a look at how that fits into your pay run. So this is the process we just followed. Um, we started with the partner. So first thing to do was to check the SPP or SPPA details if it's an adopted child. Uh, from that section, you go into the shared parental pay option where you tick the box to say you've received the declaration, confirm the weeks available and weeks being taken. You'd also provide the partner details and all of that should be on the forms provided by the employee. And then the third step was to enter the absence. So you could use the diary entry option or you can click and drag the dates on the diary. Uh, choose shared parental as the type of leave. Make sure you've got the correct from and to date. So with that set up, how does it all fit into your payroll process? Uh, well, this is very similar to any other statutory payment. So uh, just to summarize the steps, you'd start by setting your process date. So that would be the date your employees are paid and all statutory payments will calculate up to that process date. Uh, you should then check the shared parental pay amount and you can do that on the SSP parental leave tab. And the third step is to make any adjustments to other payments. So you might make up to basic if you have a company scheme that provides full pay during this period of leave, or you might manually reduce the payment to pay the employee their basic pay for whatever they happen to have worked in that period. So I'm gonna process my next pay run. So first thing I will do is just set my pay date to 31st of July. That's the date that my employees will be paid. I'll just select employees two and four, the ones that have the shared parental pay. And I'll go into the enter payment screen, click onto SSP slash parental leave. And we can see for this first employee, there is 156 pound 66. That's one week at the standard rate of aid, uh, which is due now. And that covers the dates from Monday the 25th of July, uh, right up to our pay date on Sunday the 31st. So on the summary tab, you'll see the same total for shared parental pay. And all you then need to do is make an adjustment to the employee's basic. So if you still want them to receive their basic because you have a company scheme that gives them full pay whilst they're on shared parental leave, uh, you could use the make up basic option by first entering the full amount you want them to get. And then when you click on make up basic, it will automatically adjust down by the amount of statutory pay. Or probably more likely, um, you'll need to do a manual adjustment to the salary if you don't have a company scheme so that they're only being paid for the days they are currently working. So for this employee, I'm actually going to adjust the hours value myself. Um, I know that I want to pay them for uh, 16 out of 21 working days this month. So that's how I've decided to adjust the salary and shared parental pay will be payable on top of that reduced salary amount. Uh, we'll take a look at the next employee as well. So first of all, let's check the shared parental leave. 
so four weeks in this instance due now that's the period of time between the 4th of July and our pay date so four weeks exactly at that standard rate again we can see that amount here uh, we've also got some maternity pay at this point because remember this employee um, was switching from maternity straight on to shared parental pay so that maternity pay covers the period up to so the 0.43 weeks period up to the the fourth and um, as I don't have a company scheme I've already reduced the salary down to zero this employee isn't currently working um, and they're just going to get their statutory pay instead now one thing just to mention um, for employees on any kind of parental leave is that most pension schemes um, will have a rule saying that you need to maintain the, the current pension contribution for the employer uh, based on their usual salary rather than on their reduced pay. So what you may need to do in order to record the correct employer pension is just jump into the employee record, go on to your pensions tab, uh, manage the pension scheme and click edit. And uh, you may need to set the employer contribution to a fixed amount rather than a percentage so that you can maintain uh, the contribution that needs to be uh, recorded for the employer. But if you're unsure how it works with your pension scheme, uh, you can check the scheme rules with your pension provider. But that's a tip, uh, use a fixed amount if there's a specific amount you need to keep contributing, even though the pay has gone down. Right, um, so that's the payments entered. It is noting that more than one statutory payment has been made for this period, which is fine. And uh, we'll take a quick look at the pay slips. So just like maternity and paternity, you just see the parental pay amount. And this was a salary that we manually reduced. And then for the other employee, this is a combination of maternity and shared parental pay. So that's the total amount. Uh, that's due to that second employee. So that was uh, processing the payment. Last thing we're going to cover is uh, the reclaim. So um, if you're familiar with maternity or paternity, uh, this again works in the same way. So all employers can reclaim at least some of the statutory parental pay that they pay out. And for most employers, that will be 92% of the amount you've paid. Uh, however, if you qualify for small employers relief, you get 100% of the statutory pay and a further 3% NI compensation. So you actually get back 103% in total. Qualifying conditions for small employers relief is that your total uh, class one NICs, so that's the employer, and employee contribution combined is £45,000 or less in the tax year before the qualifying or matching week. So as part of starting a new tax year, we always recommend that you check what your previous year's total national insurance contribution was. And if it is £45,000 or less, there is a setting that you need to select to ensure that you are reclaiming the correct amount for any of these statutory payments. So um, I'm going to show you that setting. Um, we're then going to run our month end tasks. We're going to do a P32 and uh, there'll be a submission that we need to make an EPS in order to report the values reclaimed. So I'll just come out of this report browser. And before I complete payroll, let's check the small employers setting. That's company and then settings. On the details tab here. We've already selected eligible for small employers relief. So I did that as part of starting the new tax year. So I'm just going to complete my July payroll. Let's assume that we've produced all the reports that we need. I'm going to go ahead and update the records. And uh, we will send a full payment submission in the usual way. But this full payment submission, where it's showing a total liability of £2,695, uh, doesn't include the amounts we've reclaimed. So once we've completed all our payrolls for the tax month, 
we'll need to run our P32, which will tell us how much we need to pay. And because we've reclaimed some statutory pay, uh, we'll need to do an EPS submission. So P32 report can be found from the payroll links. If you want a quick way to get to it, or you can go to the main reports option, period end folder, and it's this one here, form P32 employer payment record. I'm going to run it for the, the current tax month, month four, the one I've just completed. And what you'll see on this, if I just zoom in slightly, is uh, as well as the SMP we've recovered for that first three days, we've also got our shared parental pay recovered. And as a small employer, we've got the NI compensation. And therefore, the amount due is just over a thousand pounds because of these items we're reclaiming. So we've actually had some employment allowance back this month. We've got some statutory payments. Um, so that's the reason why we need to send an EPS. We need to report these statutory payment reclaim values. So that can also be done from the payroll links. Employer payment summary is available from here, or you'll find it from e-submissions within the e-submissions tasks. You would choose the first option that you're recovering statutory payments and therefore adjusting your payment. Uh, tax month is month four. Uh, these are the values recovered for the year to date. So this is all of the maternity pay I've recovered this tax year, all of the shared parental pay. Um, CIS deduction suffered doesn't apply in this example, nor does apprenticeship levy. And when we complete that wizard, we then get this EPS submission, the employer payment summary. We would send that through to HMRC and they will then know that we've reclaimed statutory pay and uh, we'll be paying the amount that was due on our P32. So that is the reclaim and a summary there of those two processes. Run the P32, submit the EPS. Uh, that submission will need to be sent between the 20th of the current month and the 19th of the following month uh, to ensure that it does affect the correct period um, on your PAYE online account. And that is just about it for the presentation. So um, we are going to stick around a little while longer to give you the chance to send through any of your final questions. And while we wait for those to come through, I just want to mention some of the further support uh, that we have available for you. So first port of call, if you have a payroll question, is our help center, which you can access in your browser from sage.co.uk slash help, or from in Sage Payroll, if you click on the help center icon. So from here, you can search our knowledge base by entering your keywords and doing a search. Uh, you can also read our curated support guides. You can access upcoming webinars and recordings using the webinars link towards the top of the page. You'll also be able to watch various videos and find all the contact options for our support team. And you also have access to Sage University at sageu.com. Once you've created your profile there, you'll be able to do our e-learning courses, the payroll certification and bite-sized learning, um, all available free of charge from Sage University. So as I say, um, that's it for the presentation, but we will stick around just to give you that chance to ask any final questions. Also, if you'd like a copy of the handout, uh, do grab that from the handouts icon. Uh, for anyone that is leaving now, thanks so much for joining us. I hope you found the session helpful and um, you've learnt more about shared parental leave and pay. And do look out for your follow-up email which we'll be sending out probably in around an hour's time. So I'm just going to go on mute briefly just to check for any outstanding questions and I will come back to you uh, when we're about to close the session. Okay, so it looks like the 
questions that have come through have been answered. So um, thanks for sending those in and uh, thanks to Calvin for answering those for us. Um, as I don't seem to see any other questions come through, I think we're going to call it a day. So thanks once again for joining us at the session. Look out for your follow up email with a recording of today's session and links to sign up for more. Uh, do stay safe out there and uh, we look forward to seeing you on some of our other webinars soon. Goodbye for now.